So, okay, uh, continuing on to the next project, uh, lab zero I think was not terribly important, so I'm going to just move on to lab one. Unfortunately, uh, the code is not available. I um, did manage to find some, you know, old Git repository that was public, and I don't know if this was intentional or not, but I stole the code. Um, I don't think it's stealing if it's a public repository, but in any case. Um, and so, uh, so I found the labs, uh, right? So here's lab one over here with all these C files. And um, we can start looking at the lab code. Over here, we can start reading the lab assignment. And I think what, like most of this is not uh, all that important, right? It's just like how to run a C program. So, right, generic instructions. We'll see how to do that more specifically here, right? So, simple C program. In this exercise, we will see an example of a preprocessor of preprocessor macro definitions. Macros can be a messy topic, but in general, the way they work is that before a C file is compiled, all macro constant names are replaced exactly with the value that they return uh, refer to. So, you know, I guess it's just kind of uh, you know, these would be the um, the preprocessor macros. Uh, so like, yeah, here, let's see if uh, uh, they get even more detailed. So in the scope of this exercise, we'll be using the macro definitions uh, exclusively as global constants. Here we define constant name to refer to literal value. Um, so, right, so they're just abstractly defining uh, any line of code that looks like this, and what we have is uh, so four instances of it over here. So uh, they're going to define this constant name v0 to be the number three. I don't actually, and by the you know, I cloned this repo. I don't know if this is like after the student edited the code or um, or if it's before any edits. So I guess we'll find out as we go through this. But in any case, so. Uh, right, so we're defining uh, the constant name and its literal value, so the value three. And okay, so now let's look at the code in the, right, that's what we're doing now, the eccentric file. We will see four different examples of basic C control flow, right? So I guess we're, let's see the four examples, right? There's a for loop, that's control flow. There is a switch, that's control flow. There's, oh, right, this uh, if else kind of structure, ternary if or whatever. Uh, there's a more uh, verbose, elaborate if structure. So, what, yeah, I guess that's four. Okay. Uh, first, compile and run the program to see what it does. Okay, that sounds fair. Um, they give instructions on how to compile and run over here. So, we're going to say GCC, right? New. Uh, compiler dash o because we're going to compile it to object code. Eccentric is the name of the object file that we're going to create, and then um, uh, the the C source file is what you give it next. Hit enter. Great. Uh, does not complain, so it means that probably things went okay. Uh, now, let's run it. So, eccentric, and it prints out some stuff. Why does it print this stuff out? Let's see uh, what it says. So, um, it printed, ha uh, right, or of course, it's going to just always print this uh, line here. And uh, then it prints and write the line breaks the slash ends get you the line breaks then we're going to print happy some number of times how many times i guess three because we're looping with v0 going from zero up to three so three times okay great line break uh then we get into a switch statement and i guess well with v1 equal to three then we should be getting into case three yeshua and that is here great uh, and a line break uh, built right into that print statement. And uh, okay, so that's so that explains that line. Um, Why do we get an extra line break? I wonder. But anyway, um, okay, and s, which I guess yes, it was uh, declared up here as a basically a string, right? This is more or less uh, how you declare a string in C, uh, right? Uh, I guess, um, hmm, how much should I explain here? Uh, uh, oh, 
I guess it all comes down to what is the point of these videos. Um, am I supposed to be explaining C or just explaining me solving the problems? Anyway, um, I'll just say this real quick, that um, lists in C are effectively just the same things as pointers to an address in memory. And if you want to go to the, right, so if you just go to the zeroth index of the list, you just go to the spot in memory and whatever's there, that's that's the, you know, the zeroth element of the list. So this has to do with pointers. Um, and all a string is, is it's a char list, right? So that's kind of explaining why this is a string, right? So, so uh, it's uh, because we declare char, that means the type that you're going to find at these coordinates is char, character. Uh, and it's a star s, star indicating that it's a pointer to some address in memory. And, um, and I guess you know, we'll, we'll see this more later on, but the perhaps important thing is that um, if you want to increment to other indices in the list, you're effectively just kind of marching to adjacent addresses in memory. And we'll see exactly how you control that in other places if you're not already familiar with it. Okay. Uh, so anyway, so, so S was declared as a string and therefore we can say, well, if uh, V3 is equal to three, uh, which I guess, right, I mean, uh, so, um, yeah, okay, so, so v3 equal to 3, so it is, and therefore, uh, because it is, we uh, set this equal to go, so s is equal to go, and then, okay, and this is where an extra line break comes in, uh, this is a formatted string, so because we say percent %s here, then the value of s is sort of uh, inserted in that place. So that's why we get go and then bears. Oh, but how do we know that we're in the if condition? Well, if v2. So v2 is set to one, one behaves like true. Uh, and so we're saying if true, so we get into this line. Okay, great. And finally, every C program ends with return zero or some, return some int. Uh, returning zero is generally taken to be sort of uh, an encoding that everything went fine. Uh, okay, and that's why uh, uh, it prints uh, go bears. Great. Okay, cool. And so, yeah, maybe that's a good place to just uh, end this first exercise of the lab.